Hi everyone, welcome to the Autoimmune Dietitian YouTube channel. My name is Annie, I'm a registered dietitian, and I work with people struggling with autoimmune diseases. In my work with my clients, I help them use both food and lifestyle as a way to improve their health and hopefully feel better. So if there's one place where people struggle with elimination diets, it's the reintroduction process. After doing a full elimination diet and cutting out a bunch of foods, it's really hard to be patient when adding foods back in. Also, sometimes it's not clear whether or not you're having a reaction to a specific food or not. So here are my tips for doing the reintroduction process correctly. Before I jump in, I just need to attach a disclaimer to this video that the information in today's talk is not the substitute for the diagnosis, treatment, or care of disease by a medical provider. This is for informational purposes only. So please consult your qualified health professional for any changes you make to your medical care. So before we begin, let's talk about what the reintroduction phase is. So reintroductions take place after you've eliminated foods for a set period of time. Adding foods back in is important for these reasons. First, we need to determine what foods you react to. Also, food sensitivities can heal. So if you've reacted to a food in the past, it's important to try that food again to see if you now tolerate it. Second, the overall goal is variety in the diet. Restrictive diets are not meant to be long-term. The more food, foods you can add back in, the more variety and nutrients you will be able to expose your body to, and the gut microbiome loves diversity. So having a wide variety in your diet supports your microbiome. Lastly, the more you can expand the diet, the more joy you will find in eating, and the easier it will be for you to eat out and be social. So an important question that many people ask is, when do you start reintroductions? You want to start adding foods back in once you notice a difference and or reduction in symptoms. In other words, you want your body to be at a good baseline from which you can measure reactions to foods. Most people notice a difference in four to six weeks from starting an elimination diet. For some, it may take up to three months. However, if you've been following an elimination diet for three months and you don't notice a difference, there's clearly something else wrong that is not food related. And at that point, you should start investigating other avenues. So what foods should you reintroduce first? Well, when starting the reintroduction process, you wanna start with foods that you think are potentially your least reactive options. If you are following the autoimmune protocol or AIP, there are phases of reintroductions that start with the historically least reactive foods and work their way to the most reactive. If you are not following AIP, then your best guess, then make your best guess as to what foods may not cause a reaction. Gluten and dairy tend to be the most reactive, so don't add those back first. And there's when you're adding things back in, there are a handful of different methods for reintroducing. The key here is that you want to reintroduce a food on day one and then not eat that food again for the next three to seven days. This is because this is because food reactions can be delayed. And during that time, you want to monitor your symptoms, notice if anything feels off. But in terms of actually eating that food, you want to start off with eating a small piece of that food, say like a half a teaspoon, and wait 15 minutes. If no reaction occurs, eat a teaspoon of that food and wait another 15 minutes. If no reaction occurs, eat one and a half teaspoons and wait about two to three hours. If no reaction occurs, eat a normal portion of that food and then wait three to seven days. That is traditionally how you are supposed to reintroduce foods. So how do you know if you have a reaction? Well, during this process, symptom journaling is going to be your best friend. This is the only way you will tell if you have a reaction to something or not. Like I've mentioned in past videos, pick a key, pick a few key symptoms to measure, especially ones that you notice during flares or periods of inflammation. Try to track those ones on a daily basis and see whatever, if you're eating, see if it affects your symptom scores. Some reactions may be super obvious, others may not be. So it's important to stay curious, be diligent, and track your symptoms. I should also note here that with some foods, you may notice that that Foods are dose dependent. You may be okay eating a little bit of that food, but too much of that food may cause a reaction. My last tip with food reintroductions is to never swear off a food forever. Remember that food sensitivities are not permanent. They can change and your body can heal. So if you reacted to a food once, try it later down the road. Additionally, when you are reintroducing foods, it's important to pay attention to other factors in your life. For instance, if you're going through a really stressful time, you may react to everything you add back in. This might be because your body is just overwhelmed and can't han handle anything more. So take note of that 
and add those foods back in when things are less stressful. Other things that affect reactions could be a poor night's sleep, um, over-exercising, toxic burdens, jet lag and travel. So just keep an open mind, track everything, and come back to those things that you didn't tolerate at first. So that is it for reintroductions. Hopefully you've gained some important tips that can help you down the road. If you would like more help managing your autoimmune disease or an inflammation, I would love to chat with you. I offer free 15 minute discovery calls to learn about your goals and to see if we are a good fit for working with each other. So go to my um, YouTube profile and the link to a discovery call booking should be there. Um, while you're there, I have lots of other free materials. There's a, uh, my blog on my website has lots of great information. Um, I have free resources on my website as well. So please check those out. And if you do not already subscribe to my channel, please hit the little subscribe button. I would really appreciate it if you, you know, continue to check out my videos. They come out every week and um, hopefully you learn something to help manage your autoimmune disease with food and lifestyle. So thanks for joining me again on the autoimmune dietitian, and I will see you next time.